Hi, welcome to the Art and Wife podcast. We are here because it's our desire in this podcast to disciple women to passionately pursue submission and love in their marriages out of the reverence for Christ. And today we are here to talk about what should I expect from my husband? And when I'm talking about we, I'm talking about my sisters in Christ, Tiffany and Jennifer here, the ardent fellow ardent wives. <laughs> and yeah, we are having just, we were just having a conversation off camera, just talking about like this marriage thing, when you signed up for it, like as you're going through it, I don't know if this is what I expected my husband to be like. Mm -hmm. And so we are just want to just have a conversation with you all about what do I expect from my husband? And is that even like, sh should I expect that from my husband? Is that even like attainable? Or is that something that I'm putting on him that he doesn't necessarily, that's a cross that he doesn't necessarily need to bear. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think? What should you expect from your husband? If anything. So <laughs> the first thing that I think about is that you should expect your husband to fail. The end. Ooh! If you ain't <laughs> <laughs> the right? You right. really should. And if you expect that, all your expectations will be met. Then. <laughs> right? Because not in a husband bashing way, though. No, absolutely. Not. At, yeah, no. That because like whatever I have in my mind, I don't know if Ed has that same list of what he's supposed to be doing in his mind. So Yes, you should expect your husband to fail to the standards that you're giving him that you haven't even expressed or like some of them are just kind of irrational, to be honest with you. Right. And then if you think about it, like we are there's no perfect human, right? Mm -hmm. There is no perfect human being. So you can expect you know, I think like you were saying, um, like in our own conversations, we start being brainwashed at three and four years old with the Disney princess who lives heavily ever after. So we think in that is this is the expectation, right? Not failure. But when right. you take a look at the Bible and you see, wait a minute, <laughs> there are no perfect people. Like if there's a perfect place or a perfect, like soon as I show up is imperfect again. So Even it's relationships. Like, yeah. And so I'm like, expect them to fail. Like, and like yeah. you said, not from a bashing point of view, but just from, I know myself, I fail. So I know he's going to fail. Too. <laughs> I just think of Abraham and Sarah, when you said people in the Bible, right? Abraham, right? Who's promised. And then Sarah's like, you know what, Beth? We're not, we're not doing this like multiplying thing. How about we get somebody else to help us out? And then let me catch feelings because you got somebody else pregnant that I told you to get pregnant. Like that, <laughs> that's us. Like that's how we it's do. So, it's who we are. It's so who we are. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what do you think, Jennifer, when I say, what should you expect from Rondi? <laughs> Well, I realize I probably have a lot of expectations and I see my expectations when I feel disappointed. Kind of like you said, Tiffany, mm -hmm. I, I don't always think I have expectations, but yeah. when something doesn't go the way I think it should go, I realized I had an expectation. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting because I, I was looking up I'll share the definition of expectation, a strong belief that something will happen or can be in the case in the future. And I, I so want to hold an expectation of, of things, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, but I think I can really only hold those to myself and to God, right? I think about, and I don't know if it's a Psalm where it says, I wait in expectation for what you're going to do that day. I pray and I wait in expectation, right? Um, and I think it's important to to realize like what are my expectations. So I think when we first got married, I think I probably expected him to always be there. I expected him to meet every emotional need. I expected him to understand, you know, when my hormones are high and low. I expected him to understand. Well, right? Jan, that's not fair. No. <laughs> when I first got married, I think I did have all these like 
expectations or I expected us, our, our lives. We did this course, Love and Respect. And in one of the sessions, it talks about Hollywood versus Hollywood, right? And I think, you know, what have I been fed all my life of what, what a marriage should be like? And, you know, he should take care of me and he should know what I'm thinking and right. Like all of that is, is kind of what you said, Tiffany, in a right way. Like I, those should probably all go out the window, you know? Um, and so I think that that's important to kind of think about, you know, I think, um, when, when it comes to kind of what the Bible says, it, I'd love this thing. It, it just says I should expect somebody to forgive. I should expect somebody to be able to communicate. I should expect somebody to love to their best ability. You know, like those are like right expectations, mm -hmm. but I, I see, you know, kind of all the expectations that come, especially when I feel disappointed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I absolutely, yeah. I always agree with you guys. Well, most of the time, but I, I think you're both of you like, and I, we expect our husbands to read our minds. And I'm thinking of other podcasts that we did, like the power of communication. And if you're not telling your husband and being open and honest with him, like, how do you expect him to react? Mm -hmm. And I just think of like, if you consistently are criticizing or disappointed in him, not react or not meeting your expectations, that creates resentment, right? Yes. Um, like you were saying in your relationship to the place where your husband doesn't feel like it's a safe space in the relationship to show up. And one of the biggest fears for our husband, Tiffany said, we should expect our husbands to fail. But the biggest thing for our husbands, as far as their role is, is failure. Like they, they are trying not to fail us. They don't want to fail us. And when they do, that really is deep seated for them. And so um, when we're create, we're creating these scenarios in our mind or, okay, like going on vacation, when I first started, I was, we're going on vacation. I'm going on vacation. But let's be real. I'm not going on vacation. I'm being mom on vacation. And so how did my <laughs> husband not just realize that, okay, we still have, he's on vacation and getting resentful because I'm still making sure the kids are eating. I'm still making sure that all the bags are packed and everything like that. Or being like, honey, we're, we're on vacation, but we got kids. So we need to <laughs> tag team together then there's no resentment there from me because he's having his best life in Disney. Meanwhile, I'm making sure that everything's happening so that everybody can live their happily ever after in Disney. Right. And so I just feel like communication is huge when we are um, creating these expectations, whether it's to be like, and not be like, honey, I expect you to, okay. That's not the way to go about it, but just letting your husband know, like, how you're feeling, why you're feeling this, where this is coming from. And that takes, that for, creates connection with you and it reduces the disappointment. And then also for your husband, like I said, he doesn't want to fail you. And so he's going to, if you communicate with him these things, he's going to do his best to meet your expectations without you just putting a, a expectation list out there for him. So I think what should you expect from your husband, um, him to meet you where you are, is what I, I would say. Um, if you're not willing to share, then he's going to meet you, he's going to disappoint you. But if you're willing to be open and honest, then he'll meet you where you are. And he still might fail. Uh, that he still will, let's say he still will fail. <laughs> not every situation, not every single time, but at least right. that doesn't start creating little um, little rifts and little disconnects and little resentments that build up and accumulate. And then later on, it comes out as criticism. It comes out as complaining and those type of things that, which is killing marriages mm -hmm. today. And so I would say too, that there's this thing of healthy expectations and unhealthy expectations, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I think, you know, for us as Christian women, we seek to marry someone who's equally yoked, you know, someone else who loves Jesus as well. And when we do that, the Bible says that a follower of Jesus have certain characteristics, mm -hmm. right? You know, mm -hmm. so there's a, now there's a healthy expectation. Like I can expect that from you, but I can also um, take that. You're not going to do that perfectly. 
<clears throat> you know, I can hold the two at, you know, simultaneously. Like I expect this from you, but also I expect that you're not going to do this perfectly. And so then I think um, it helps in my response yeah. <laughs> to how I respond to it when that expectation isn't met. It's like, now at this point, as you were saying, you know, we can communicate and we can say now we have a biblical place to start from and say, hey, well, you know, let's, this is what the Bible says about this. And when you said this, you know, I don't, how does this help me understand how this action aligns with what the Bible says a disciple of Jesus um, is supposed, how they're supposed to act or how they are supposed to respond. And so I think there are things that we can expect, but also holding that your spouse is not going to do that perfectly. <laughs> he is going to fail in that. And then yeah. you being able to um, not necessarily lower your expectation, because I believe you can still have that expectation, but then you get to be able to extend grace, um, you know, to get to be more like Christ in that situation. <laughs> so again, you're being shaped and molded. But um, I do believe it's healthy to have expectations. I mean, if you don't expect anything, like what, what, <laughs> like what are you gonna get? You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember when we were dating or we were engaged and in premarital counseling. We did some premarital counseling, and I remember very specifically like these two lists of all the household chores, and it was even checking off what you expected. Mm -hmm. the other and then we had a conversation about it and it's like your depending on your family upbringing or yeah. I think we've talked about this before in our holiday episode of like I like everything clean by January 1st and Rondi likes to display Christmas for a little longer so we had like two different expectations right and so this this like you learn as you begin to live together like I like the bed made I like I don't mm -hmm. care if you know, I like my closet door closed with the light off and you like it open and, you know, like, and so there's just like real things that it's like being able to navigate and talk through mm -hmm. is so, so important. Even we had a, a midweek this week and we were talking about expectations in one another relationships. We all have them. Right. Mm -hmm. And so how do we talk about that? And and communicate about it in a way that is fair. That's yeah. and, and D, you said something. It, it's interesting. Rondi said something the other day. We were having a discussion about something, and I think I was super emotional and feeling a lot. And I, and we were praying together. And he was just like, "Man, I want to do what's right." Mm. And I, that whole failing thing of like, mm -hmm. I just I don't even know what to do here, you know. And yeah. and that feeling that that lostness of you know, and I'm grateful he brings it to God and even before me in prayer. And, and it makes me want to have compassion of like, no, you're not yeah. failing. Yeah. I'm, I'm just crazy sometimes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but that they really do like, they you do. know, like, they yeah. want to do what's right. They want to help us. They want to care for us. Like they're made that way. It's mm -hmm. how man made. And, and yes, it's not going to be perfect. And are they always going to do it? No, they're going to fall short, just like I fall short. And yeah. maybe I need to hold myself to some expectations. And that's where the expectations go is I'm holding myself to them and not other people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're, and I think for what to expect from your husband is a great opportunity for us to exercise a submissive way. Because we're called to be the azer, which is the helpmate, which is the, to help our husband be the best that they can be. And so when we're setting these expectations, it's you, I mean, I'm trying to like censor, filter my words, not censor, filter my words. But um, I'm thinking like sometimes, sometimes there are selfish ambitions in there, but for the most part, we want the best for our family. We want the best for our husbands. And so that's why we're setting some of these expectations. Sometimes we just want to look good in public, whatever the case may be. We want to look good in the Christmas pictures. I expect everybody to wear all the same color and smile and be there. I'm talking and be myself. happy I, to be there no. and be happy. No <laughs> complaining. And everybody, yes, that can be a whole episode of family <laughs> photos because that's like a trigger for me. Um, so, but we have these expectations, right, for our husband. But it's an opportunity for us to really help them grow, help them shine, help them be the best that they can be. And communication is absolutely key. I actually remind my husband, no, babe, you're not failing us. Like this isn't failing. You just whatever the case may be, this is a different way, or this is another option for you to try it. Maybe it will work out 
differently. Um, but definitely knowing your husband is huge. Um, and then knowing like, are the expectations that I have for my husband really realistic in who he is as a, as a person, or is it, is it reflective mm -hmm. of how I am? Because we're different. That's a like good, that yeah. light on in the closet and closet. I hate the closet doors being open and he likes them all open. Like we're different. Right. <laughs> and so it's one of those things, like, but he knows like he'll, I've noticed he'll shut the door because he knows that it bothers me that the closet doors are open, you know? Mm -hmm. So just letting him know and really being open with that so that, um, and mm -hmm. closet doors have nothing to do with my husband being an amazing person. Like I get it. like, but that's just something small right. of like ways that you can communicate and compromise. And we've talked about this in so many different episodes of mm -hmm. like, we're compromising. We, we, sometimes we have to die to ourselves. Sometimes they do too. But ultimately, um, when we're setting these expectations, it's not as a, uh, um, like a line for our husbands to fail. Like if they're, they don't do this, they're mm -hmm. going to fail us. We're not setting them up. We're always setting them up for success. We're not right. setting them up for failure. That's what right. I'm trying to say. Yeah. I, it's interesting. I'm kind of having two thoughts here of one of just like, how, how do I hold right? I, the idea of speaking life, speaking as though something is, even though it's not right. Like believing that my husband can get to a certain place, believing that I can get to a certain place, right. Having this idea of faith and like, okay, I believe God can work in this and holding that, but then also holding disappointment. Right. So, so maybe it is, I thought my husband was going to be faithful or maybe it was, I thought my husband like financial hardship has come and, you know, like there's big things that I think can bring disappointment. Like we're kind of like, joking about real day-to-day -day things of like household things. But then there are places of real disappointment where mm -hmm. I did, I was evenly yoked. And then my husband walked away. Wow. I was, I was following God. And then man, my wife was unfaithful or they, they had a secret life or they spent money or, or I realized their trauma runs so deep and they don't have the capacity to do A, B, C, or D, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's a real, a reality of like, how do you handle that disappointment when mm -hmm. you had thought you had a healthy expectation or a godly expectation? Like, what do you do with that disappointment? Yeah. And I think we kind of talked about, you know, it's like, what do you do with it? <laughs> the only thing I think you can, the healthy thing to do with it is take it to Christ, yeah. you know, give it to him. But then we had, um, you know, the Rondi on as the marriage counselor, you know, there's a point in it too, where you have to say, I need help outside of, of this, someone to walk, you know, to walk alongside you in that, because I recognize that. And I would imagine, I, you know, I can't speak to that because I have never gone through that, but I would imagine that's difficult. You know, feelings and emotions are high. You have these expectations and you're like, God, I did everything right. And so therefore, because I did everything right, I married someone who's equally yoked. As, like I followed the playbook. And this did not work mm -hmm. for me. So now what? You know, you go back to the author of the playbook and you say, hey, God, <laughs> like, hey, I did all these things. This, now what? You know, it's like, yeah. what's the next play? But I do believe that there's a point in that, too, where you may need to seek some additional help to to work past, you know, to work through those things and be in community with other people who've also experienced that, because I think that could be an encouragement, too to know someone um, else who's walked through it to say, oh, okay, you can get to the other side or, oh, you know what? You can eventually forgive. Even if you don't stay with the person, you can still find, you know, forgiveness in your heart and not have, you know, bitterness. Like, okay, if you did, like there is hope, <laughs> you know, I can see that. And so it makes it a little bit easier. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad you said forgiveness because that's the first thing that I, I thought of. And and I don't, I don't I don't ever want this podcast for people to feel like we're spiritually bypassing. Like we're just you can pray yes. away because yes, God has gifted so many people um to come walk alongside you. And I think of second Corinthians like one where he's like you the struggles that you have, you share it with others and communities because they've struggled so they can help you struggle and point you to Jesus. So yes, you go to the marriage counseling, but you still are praying. You still are faithful. Um, and I just think of there's expectations that Jesus had for us. And then we sin day in, day out, and he forgives us, right? And 
being able to offer forgiveness to your husband, but sometimes you forgive today and then tomorrow you wake up and you're like, you know what? I don't really forgive him like I thought I forgave him. Mm -hmm. And that's where community is really, really helpful to redirect you, point you back to Jesus so that you can have that heart of forgiveness. Because mm -hmm. if you don't have forgiveness in your marriage, like it's going to be a a torn veil. Like it's it's just not going to be able to, there's some things that won't be able to be overcome. And there is some things that you've experienced in your marriage that are really hard to overcome. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're called to do in community. So I'm glad that you brought up forgiveness because that's the first thing I thought of um, when Jennifer was saying these things, because there's some things that you can do it, forgive like, okay, Monday through Thursday, but then one trigger and then you're, you're back to that space again and just offering mm -hmm. that over and over again, 7,000 times. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. which is hard to do, to walk it out on a daily basis with someone for eternity until you go to eternity. Yeah. So I don't, I just, yeah, I never want people to be like, oh, they're just about praying it away. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, we, and I'm we, glad you said that because that's huge. Yeah, I mean, no. And when you said that, it made me think about Paul. You know, Paul, this is the guy someone falls out the window and he brings them, you know, through the power of the spirit. But he's also the guy who told Timothy, Timothy to drink some wine for his stomach. You know, it's like, you know, like, so it's like, yeah, you just don't pray everything away. You know, yeah. like there is sometimes you need out and God, God's in that too. You yes, know, he's in it. So just yeah. recognizing that. Yeah. It's like, no, this isn't like pie in the sky, spiritualize everything and just dismiss people's real struggles and problems. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's valid. And I think community too, um, not in a, uh, is so important, not in a place of like creating these expectations because your sister in Christ, her husband does this, but like walking, like when you're, when you are disappointed in these expectations, mm -hmm. walking through that um, and even having out, I say over and over a pace or someone's like, yeah, you know, I had this expectation for my husband and he didn't meet it. And this is how we overcame um, is great tools. And that's what we have here. Or we aspire to have here. We pray to have here in the Ardent Wife podcast through our Ardent Wives Club. It's just a place and a space for us to do life together, the hard and the fun and the joyful things together, and yep. really um, point each other to Jesus. Do you have something to say, Jennifer? Yeah, I just what something you said about um, reminded me of something I read this morning. So I just want to share it because I think it so applies the idea of an active faith. Um, and it says, um, and brave your way through life is the work of active faith. It isn't shrugging your shoulders in the face of complexity and saying God's in control, right? That's one way, like God's in control. Okay, God's got this, right? But it says an active faith means taking the steps to change what you can change. It means taking responsibility for what's yours to work out. Mm -hmm. And it also means bravely surrendering to the reality that you're not ultimately in power. And there's a profound shift that happens when we surrender, when we glimpse the end of ourselves and reach the boundary of our own capacity. A moment of surrender is quite possibly the bravest act, but it's active. There's an act, there's work to be done. It's not just, well, God's in control. I'm just going to pray and he's going to take care of it. There's a piece that we have to step into and do the work with him. Um, and there's an active phase. So maybe I think it's really true that we have a part to play in this um, and being able to understand and see what our expectations are, right? What are they? Do you know what your expectations are? Do you notice when you're putting your expectations on other people and not maybe even holding yourself to those same yeah. ones, you know? Um, and, and then taking the steps to forgive, huge, huge. So, yeah. 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 I love that, that active faith aspect mm -hmm. of it. I, I feel like, um, Personally, I was in a season or, or that I was just in life that I would only come to Jesus when it's time to fix it. But I didn't really want to have a relationship with him. Like, I just wanted to pray when things were hard, like, Lord, help me. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to have that daily relationship in and out and actively mm -hmm. engaging. And I feel like um, whether it's with your husband or with relationship with Jesus, you have to, it's that active role that mm -hmm. you put in there. Um, and this kind of, and that surrender like, man, it's, that's, that's a stinky word, but it's, and it's humbling, right? You got to humble your pride in both the, the surrender and the expectations, like humble your pride, humble what you're putting towards your, on your husband, not towards on your husband because of your own desires 
yeah. and um, really just kind of walk it out. Yeah. And I think like uh, what you were, what you were reading, Jen, it made me think about, you know, most of us don't want to take responsibility. You know, we don't want to take responsibility and ownership for our own part. And so it's like, you know, this lazy faith where I'm just going to pray and then God's going to fix it. Or it's like a genie in a bottle. Like, I don't have to change anything about me. I don't have to change any of my actions. I don't have to change anything I'm doing. I'm going to pray and Jesus is just going to zap me. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, that's not the way it works, you know. This no. isn't a superhero. He's not flying in with a cape. He wants to walk <laughs> through life with you. He wants to do life yeah. for you. He wants to teach you. He yeah. wants you to follow. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to learn if he's just going to swoop it up and wipe it clean and fix right. it all up for you. You got to you got to take some responsibility yes. and learn. I have a 10-year-old who just got off punishment for the first time I think ever and I was like, "Girlfriend, like you got this time you're going to learn, <laughs> you know? And I think Jesus does that too. He's like, I've given you grace so many times, but there comes a point where I'm going to have to teach you something. And it's sometimes yeah. it's through discipline yeah. um, and, and humbling yourself is yeah. part of the discipline. So I think we gave him tools. We have a resource. It's our club, the Art and Wives Club um, of places and spaces that you can go and kind of walk, walk this out, do community with it. It's virtual. And maybe one day we'll have so many Ardent Wives that we can have um, local meetups, but that's just a prayer on our hearts. And I would love for you to join us and start making that come true. You can find our club in the description down below. And yeah, we are really just here um, just to help disciple women and just point you so that you passionately pursue not only submission in your husband, but Jesus. That's what it's all about. And so I really hope that you join us either on the club. Maybe you leave a comment down below or even a voice message. That would be really cool to hear your voice. And if you're on YouTube, if you could share, like, and subscribe, share it with someone that you think this would bless, subscribe to our podcast so that you get other episodes or just like us. We like to be liked. Everyone wants to be liked, fully seen and fully loved. And yeah, until next time, be blessed and we'll see you then.